and we're going to talk about for the next three chapters uh, economic theory. And I think you'll find, since this is new on this part of the exam, uh, at least my guess is they're not going to get extremely complicated. Um, you know, the percentage-wise is, is not very high, and I think you will begin to see that uh, the questions, at least as we're anticipating these, um, will not be as difficult as you think. There are a few terms you'll probably have to go back over. We're going to split it into uh, to really a couple of sections. It's divided in, in the book into three chapters, but one is so short, we can do it very, very quickly. But we're going to look at micro and macroeconomic theory, and as I said, I don't think you're going to find the, that uh, you're going to have to get into great detail uh, in this particular area. Probably looking at you know, 10, 9, 10, 12 questions at most as multiple choice, okay? And since we don't have uh, any simulations, that makes this a little bit easier. So if you want to follow through my notes as well as in the book, but I, I just put some notes together outline-wise to try to keep us focused as we go through this material, okay? And what I'm going to do is give it to you in pieces. I'll give you a short lecture with some illustrations, and then we're going to just reinforce it with questions. So we're going to spend a lot of time working questions based upon the material that we take a look at, okay? So if you look at the first part of your notes, we're going to just talk about supply and demand and, and some basic concepts there. Now, I think you'll find if you just catch a few of these concepts, it actually is pretty simple as far as what we're doing. I know it can get more complicated, but I don't think that's what you're going to find on the exam in this particular situation. Let me just draw you guys a simple graph as we begin to take a look at this stuff of what we mean when we talk about supply and demand. And we'll simply look at it from this perspective. We'll look at price or dollars over here, and we'll look at quantity over here, okay, on this axis as we try to draw this thing out, okay? And when we look at supply and demand, we say if we take a look at the law of demand, we have a curve that comes down like this. That's our demand curve. And we're going to find that the demand and supply curves are in, in opposites of each other. They're in contradiction, creates a conflict, and it's that point of equilibrium that we're always looking for. This is what you're saying with demand. If prices are low, and this is zero, okay, both for quantity and for price, and it's running up the scale, if prices are low, people will demand more, will they not? I mean, just think, it's, it's common sense. The cheaper the price, the more we would demand. If gas prices were to fall, well, we'd probably drive more, would we not? We would demand more. But as prices rise, then demand and quantity drops, does it not? It gets to a point where we say, well, it's too expensive, I'm going to drive less, okay, because of that. Okay, so all we're saying is when we look at demand, the cheaper the price, the more we demand. The higher the price, the less we demand. That's all that curve says. Very, very simple curve. In contradiction to that is a supply curve. And producers are saying, the higher the price, the more I'll supply. And the lower the price, what? The less I'm willing to supply. I've got to make a profit. And therefore, if prices are low, I'm not willing to supply a lot. But boy, when prices go up, I will produce all you want. But that's in the direct competition with the, the buyer who says, but my demand is the cheaper the price, the more I want, and the more expensive it is, the less I want. And where this line crosses is, I'll put a little E here, that's the point of equilibrium. That's where we do business. That's where we do business, is it not? At that point, we're simply saying, at this price, this quantity, suppliers are willing to supply this quantity, buyers are willing to pay this price. Okay? And that's all we're talking about when we begin to look at supply and demand. Now, what we'll see is there's some things that can cause these curves to shift. And we'll play with that in just a minute as we begin to take a look at it.